Hello guys, I'm back with another series uh, that is called Network Engineer Job Interviews. Uh, the purpose of this series is to create short videos wherein we're going to discuss some important concepts and frequently asked uh, questions uh, in networking in interviews uh, that network engineers come across uh, whenever they apply for jobs. To start off with, uh, I'm going to pick up a topic out of MPLS VPNs, uh, which is a very hot topic and a very, very commonly asked question in service provider interviews. And that is the difference between an RD and an RT. So let's have a look at what these terms are and how do we configure them and why do we need them in an MPLS VPN. RD is, is a route distinguisher. Uh, so this is actually uh, a, a community tag that we define under a VLF uh, in an MPLS layer 3 VPN. It's a 64-bit identifier. It gets appended to an IP address to make it a unique 96-bit address that we call a VPN v4 address. The RT, on the other hand, is a route target. This is a BGP extended community. It's also a 64-bit number that we configure on, on our routers where we run MPLS. Um, it defines VPN membership. Uh, that is what right routes are part of what VPNs. Uh, this uh, community tag is applied to VLFs in order to import and export routes from different uh, sites or different VLFs, we can say. So the basic difference between an RD and RT, if you get asked in an interview, that would be that an RD is a community tag, a 64-bit identifier that makes routes unique in an MPLS domain for a specific VLF or a specific customer. On the other hand, the RTs, they are used for VPN membership, uh, where you exchange routes using RT community values. So that should be the answer that you should uh, be going for in an interview if you get asked about RD versus RT. So let's now have a look at how do we configure them on, on a router and then we will see uh, why do we need them right now and what is the flow for um, the traffic in an MPLS VPN using RDs and RTs. Okay, uh, this configuration has been taken from a Cisco device. So uh, this is uh, from a Cisco's perspective uh, about how to configure an RD and an RT. Uh, obviously different vendors have different command line syntax. For Huawei it's different, you go under the VPN instance. For Juniper you go under the routing instance. Uh, for Cisco it's the VRF. So as long as you know the concept uh, uh, about how to configure an RD and an RT or where to configure an RD and RT on a router, then you're good to go in an interview irrespective of the command line differences that different vendors have. From a Cisco's perspective, uh, if we have to configure an RT, we go under the VLF definition uh, like we go for any other vendor and then we define uh, the RD value. In our case, we have defined 100 colon 1. So the convention that we use is that we configure RD with an AS number followed by any specific number for that particular VRF or a particular client that we have uh, terminating uh, on that PE for a specific VRF. Similarly, for RT configuration, you go under the VRF definition. Uh, after configuring the RD, you configure your route targets. Now, route targets are configured for import and for export because as we discussed the route targets, they define VPN membership and they are used to exchange routes between different VRFs or different sites of the same VRF. So we need to uh, configure them for importing routes and for exporting routes. Now import and export, this is very important to understand from an interview's perspective, that import and export is with respect to the VRF. So when you say I'm exporting routes, so that means you're exporting routes from a VRF to the core. Which, where the MPLS uh, domain is. And when you say I'm importing routes, that means you're importing routes from the core into the VRF of a particular client. Uh, for example, if I have a VRF for a bank called HSBC or Barclays, so if I'm importing routes for that particular VRF for that, that specific bank, so that means the routes are being learned for that particular branch of Barclays or HSBC, whatever we have configured the VRF for.
So you have import and export both uh, for VRF uh, for our targets. Now this is a very basic uh, configuration example. You can you can have complex scenarios where you create a route policies for route target import and export and then you play with community community tags uh, and I mean you can make it as complex as you can depending upon your requirement but from an interview's perspective if somebody asks you that how do you configure an RD or an RT or where do you configure it so you can tell them that we configure it under the VRF definition and for RD is uh, usually the convention is the AS number followed by any specific number for that VRF but for RTs we have to configure both import and export so that we get we exchange routes for our VRFs um, that are configured for different sites or for different customers. Let's have a look at this example uh, that would help you in understanding the difference much, much better. So uh, if you have a look at this uh, MPLS domain, we have two P routers. One is the P1, other one is the P2. And on both routers, we have uh, two different VRFs, VRF A and VRF B. So we can say that we're using VRF A for customer one and VRF B for customer two. The subnets that we have for, for both VRFs are the same. So for example, if, if the customer A says that I wanna use 10 slash eight uh, in my LAN, and this customer B says that I also wanna use 10 slash eight for my LAN. As you know that we use private addressing for MPLS VPNs. So the subnet, subnets can be same for two different customers where we have a scenario like this. So what we do is, we append an RD value to the subnet and that makes the IP address a VPN v4 address. That is a unique address that floats in the MPLS domain. So for example, uh, customer A sends a traffic from 10.0.0.1 and the customer B sends the traffic from the same IP from his LAN. So when it reaches the PE, Obviously, we have different VRFs on the P for different customers. So you can say that uh, why do we need the RD then? Because the VRFs are going to differentiate between different routes from different customers. Now here comes the catch. Because the VRFs are always local to the router. In interviews, uh, people get asked about this, that if we have different VRFs for different customers on a PE, then why do we need uh, an RD? Because the routes will be unique in different VRFs. But the answer to this is that when we export the routes to the core in the MPLS domain, we don't have the, uh, if we don't have the RD value, we will get uh, routes mixed up because the MPLS domain, they don't have VRFs. VRFs are local to the, to the PE. So if you see that when we append the RD value, which is unique for each VRF, 1-1 one, one for VRF A and 2-2 two two for VRF B. So in the MPLS domain, the MPBGP uh, domain that we call, we can see that we have 1-1, one, 10-0-0-0.1. One, for VRF B, we have 2-2, two, 10-0-0-0.1. Two, zero, 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 so that makes the routes unique in the MPLS domain. This is the purpose of RD. So that is why we use RD values for each VRF so that uh, the routes in each VRF become unique for each customer. I hope this clears the uh, confusions that you have if, if you have regarding RDs. Now, why do we need RTs then? We need RTs because we want to communicate between different sites on different PEs or maybe we want to communicate between different VRFs on different PEs or even between different VRFs on the same PE. So what we do is if we have an RT value 100 colon 100 for VRF A and 200 colon 200 for VRF B. So for example, if we say that VRF B want to communicate to VRF A that is inter VRF communication by default it doesn't happen so, but if the customer B says that I want to communicate to customer A using the MPLS VPN that we have provided to both customers so what we'll do is we will import the route target value of VRF B into the VRF A for customer A and then we will export that uh, route target value from VRF A 
2 vrf b for customer b and then we will repeat the same process for the other 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 side so essentially what i'm saying is that we will import and export both route targets for both vrfs in that in that sense uh, in the in that if, if you do that so that will help us uh, enable communication between different vrfs or different customers terminating on the same pe or even on the different pe depending upon uh, what sites you want to uh, communicate with what sites for the other customer so this is the whole concept of rds and rts that we have in mprs layer 3 vpns just to reiterate that this is all about mprs layer 3 vpns because in mprs layer 2 vpns we don't have uh, vrfs we don't have cloud targets we don't have uh, route distinguishers uh, mprs layer 2 vpns is, is altogether a different connectivity but if you go for mprs layer 3 vpns you do have to define vrfs you do have to configure RDs and you have to configure RTs as well. I hope uh, this has uh, cleared the confusions that you have regarding RDs and RTs. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop a comment below and I would love to answer them. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.